You're unbelievable. You're unbelievable. What's the difference between distance and displacement? Today we came to a track to find out. The total length that you have traveled is called your distance. For example, it's like counting up each and every step you take, no matter which direction you're stepping. The length of the loop of this track is 400 meters. If I run one lap, I run a total distance of 400 meters. If I run two laps, um, it's twice as much, so that's 800 meters. Displacement is similar to distance, but with one small, subtle variation. We measure the displacement to be the length of a straight line between the starting point and the ending point. If I travel in a straight line, the displacement is equal to my distance. However, for this track, it's a loop, so I finish my first lap by ending up in the exact same place where I started. Since the ending point is the same as the beginning point, the length between those two points is zero. So, the distance traveled in one lap is 400 meters, but the displacement is zero. Even if I traveled two laps, we'd still get a similar result. The distance would be twice as much, or 800 meters, but I still end the second lap where I began the first lap, so the total displacement is still zero. Well, what if we travel in a non-straight line, and we don't return to the same point where we started? For example, we get in the car and we drive to Disneyland. In this case, our car's odometer, or that little dial that tells you how far you travel, that will tell you exactly the distance you've traveled, but it won't tell you your displacement. You could also look at Google Maps, and the directions there would say each and every road and every wind and, and bend you would have to take in the road, so that gives you the total distance you travel. To get the displacement, you'd have to draw a straight line between your beginning point and the ending point and use the little legend down in the bottom to measure how long that straight line is. Now, what if I want to know my average velocity as I'm traveling to Disneyland? Or did I mean to say average speed? Oh, is there a difference between speed and velocity? To find out, we went to Speed Week at the Bonneville Salt Flats to ask some of the fastest people in the world about speed and velocity. Because <laughs> if anyone knows about speed, it would be these guys. Every year, hundreds of racers and thousands of spectators flock to the hot, arid Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah. Some people come to walk through the pits and watch the crews work on their cars. Other people like to drive around and show off their hot rods. But me, I like to drive fast. While at the Bonneville Salt Flats, I came across David Parks, who is the son of the legendary Wally Parks. Wally founded the NHRA, or the National Hot Rod Association, which means although Wally didn't invent the idea of driving fast, he pretty much invented the sport of drag racing. During David's life, he broke seven different classes of land speed records, and even to this day still holds six of them. I talked with David, and he agreed to be interviewed for this video. So tell me, why do we race out at Bonneville Salt Flats? They've been racing at the Bonneville Salt Flats since the early 1900s because it is a big, wide expanse. There's very flat, you can get up to a lot of speed, and it's nice and wide. They can get it flat and a smooth run. The, the important thing about going fast is you have to have a lot of space to slow down afterwards. And that's right. one of the reasons they moved here from some of the street venues. So how long is the track? They have four courses up here at Speed Week, uh, the longest of which is five measured miles and with another four miles of shutdown room. And so they'll, they'll typically time cars over a distance of three miles or over the full long course of up to five miles. And how fast can they get going in the five miles, and, and what's it like driving that fast? The first day that, that they're out here of Speed Week this year, uh, the main and petite streamliner car ran 430 miles an hour wow. in, in the fifth mile and 443 miles out the back door, which that, that's a measure of how fast you're going instantaneously at the end of the five mile course. It seemed almost like a Sunday drive yeah. because 
there, it's hard to get the perception of speed it, when it's so uh, large around here. And it isn't like you've got telephone poles whizzing by. There's nothing really close for you to judge speed by. So even going at tremendous speeds, yeah. you don't notice it. So talk to me about what the speeds are like as you're going down the track. How fast are you going in the first mile, the second mile, all the way through the track? When I was making my run, I was probably going about 140 after the first mile. The, the next mm -hmm. speed is measured at the two and a quarter mile and I was I was doing about 190 in the in, in the in the two and a quarter mile. At the three mile, I was doing 208. Mm -hmm. At the four mile, 215, and at the five mile, 224. Okay. And are those speeds or velocities? What's what's the difference between those? They're reported as speeds. Speed is a scalar. Uh, velocity is a vector. And so. Uh, at Bonneville, we all hope you're all going the, the right direction, so they only report it at speeds. Oh, okay. Vector! That's me, because I'm committing crimes with both direction and magnitude. Oh, yeah! A speedometer tells you how fast you're, like, your speed then. The speedometer tells you your speed. It wouldn't tell you any kind of, uh, kind of uh, direction. Right. It only gives you the scalar speed. Right. So, a few of the main points I take away from my interview with David are that speed is a scalar, meaning it tells you how fast you're moving. Velocity is a vector. It tells us how fast we're moving and the direction we are moving. So even if we're driving in a circle at a constant speed, our velocity is changing since we keep changing our direction of travel. The last thing we need to talk about is how to calculate our average speed and average velocity. Our average speed is determined by the distance traveled divided by the time it takes to travel. Average velocity is determined by the displacement divided by time. So if I drive to Disneyland in 10 and a half hours, my average speed is 62.6 .6 miles per hour, and my average velocity is 46.7 miles per hour to the southwest. Michael Johnson in 1999 ran the 400 meter dash, which is one complete loop around the track, in about 43 seconds. His average speed would then calculate to be 9.3 meters per second, but his average velocity would be zero, since his displacement was zero. You're unbelievable. You're unbelievable.